hey lovelies welcome or welcome back to my channel it is a beautiful day outside i'm praying that i do not get bitten because the mosquito's been on my ass i heard that it's a thing of like your blood type like they have specific blood types that they love and my whole family is the same blood type so i feel like that's really a thing because we all be getting bitten anyway i have a few announcements before i jump in to solo travel for black girls this has been long awaited i told y'all i was going to do solo travel tips after i did one music fest um but then i went to the meg concert and i was trying to keep my kind of story time stack of going back and forth from high school to college um but yeah so i have a few announcements let's get into it firstly my mixtape is dropping in september so stay tuned get excited for that i'm dropping my first single next month so in august i've been working on that it's fire please get excited because i'm excited um also lovely truths and metaphorical violence is officially live um all the links will be below you can purchase directly from my publisher ingram spark shout out to them um i self-publish through them so they are in charge of distributing and all that good stuff i just had to figure out margins for two years um i'm still going to be finishing visuals i'm still going to be posting the audio part two um so yes stay tuned i would have had more visuals up already but i decided to go to jersey and slack um but not really i was i was visiting family um and i just didn't really have the time to record like how i want to and i don't really like the idea of recording for lovely truths and metaphorical violence visuals where i am now because i feel like it's very much about like my adolescence and growing up and all of that happened in jersey um or Evan State. The other thing that I was going to say is I'm going to be starting my janky high school horror stories um, series because my high school was very, very unique, very different. There was only two of its kind in the United States. Um, and I want to tell you all about that. It was horrible. It's closed down now. People should know. I'm going to write a book eventually, but we're going to start um, on YouTube. I believe that is everything. I'm very excited about my book. It's on Barnes and Noble. It's one of my dreams come true. I used to sit in Barnes & Noble for hours um, reading and being a nerd. And now my book is available on Barnes & Noble. Um, yeah, I think that's everything creatively. I just hit six months for my lock babies. They are out of control and doing whatever they want, just like me. And I love them for that. And this is how they grow out of my head. So I'm going to try not to like retwist the fuck out of them and make them super thin this time around. So I rolled a blunt and we're going to get into this travel solo black girl situation. Okay, let's do it. Okay, so first things first, start on Hopper. Start on Hopper. Um, I don't know if the girls have told you yet, but start on Hopper. This video is not sponsored, but Hopper, if you want to sponsor me, okay? Yes, I would love some percentages off and free flights and free hotels but start on hopper it is an app with a little bunny icon um and basically it it has payment plans it has bundles for hotel and um flights kind of like expedia um but it does it tracks the trends of when the flights and the hotels and stuff will be most expensive and when it will be least expensive so it's kind of like the stock market for travel like it keeps you updated with the trends of how you know we're fluctuating and um basically shows you how to get the most bang for your book or when is the best time to you know purchase kind of piggybacking off of that if you are a solo traveler in general and especially a black girl solo traveler you want to start planning at least at least two months out. I say that because you're gonna be by yourself so everything falls on you. That means budget, that means um, safety, so doing your research, which we'll get to that, we'll get to budget and we'll get to safety. Um, but yeah, so at least two months out. And I also say that because I'm a fucking procrastinator. I will decide that I wanna do something and be like, okay, I'm gonna do this thing. But as a solo traveler and as a black woman solo traveler, that is not the best idea or the safest idea. So definitely start on Hopper and definitely 
Sorry, y'all. The wind was coming in contact with my light. Anyway, definitely start on Hopper and definitely start at least two months in advance if you have decided that you want to travel somewhere. So a couple of things for just before you're getting there to kind of think about. Um, potentially traveling with either weapons or like makeshift weapons or like things that don't look like weapons but are weapons. Um, also either creating them or purchasing them once you get to where you arrive. So obviously I couldn't carry my taser the last time that I traveled alone and I didn't have anything. So my best friend, shout out to Jayla, one of my best friends since high school told me to take one of the kitchen knives with me when I decided to be really fucking stupid in Atlanta. And I did. I just wrapped it up in paper, like wrapped it up in tissue. And I brought one of the kitchen knives with me because, bitch, you never know when you're going to have to shank a hoe. Like, these men are dangerous. These bitches are dangerous. These Indies are dangerous. The world is fucking dangerous right now. So, yeah. And I'm going to insert some pictures of things that may get through TSA and then I'm going to drop links below as well. Um, another thing for your safety before you go is investing in extra locking mechanisms. So what do I mean by that? If you're staying at a hotel or you're staying at an Airbnb by yourself, like me, I stayed at an Airbnb by myself the last time I solo traveled, you want to potentially purchase things that will keep you safe before you got to shrink somebody. So I have a door stopper alarm. I'll insert pictures and I will insert a link below where it's basically like you put it under the door like a regular stopper. And so that if anyone opens it, like while you're asleep or whatever, it will make a really loud noise. Um, they don't come with batteries. You got to get like these special fucking type C or E or some weird letter batteries. Um, but yeah, so you can invest in that. You could invest in that. There's also these little like extra locks that you can put on hotel doors, which I will insert pictures of and also drop below. It's kind of like, I don't know if you've ever seen like the hotel clasp where it just like, it's like a little metal thing that kind of looks like a tuning fork and you latch it on so that if anyone tries to come in, it stops at a certain point. They have things that you like it's like an attachment that makes it stop even before that point um so yeah invest in those things because we have to stay safe out here obviously next thing i need y'all to have an emergency contact person this may be harder if you're not doing domestic travel like you know especially black folks we usually have a little bit of family here a little bit of family here a little bit of family over here and so when you're traveling domestically it might be easy to have a cousin that's a stay over that it's like okay if i get into some shit i can call this cousin if you're traveling out of the country um it's going to look a little bit different so if it's domestic i would say have someone a stay to over if possible where it's like if you are in an emergency like god forbid you end up in the emergency room they can get to you um this person needs to be reliable this person needs to answer their phone um and also how do I phrase this? Someone that is financially dependable. So for me personally, I'm one of the cousins, like I'm like a middle resting cousin. A lot of my older cousins have kids. If I was to travel to say Texas, um, for example, I have a cousin that lives in Texas. She has a couple of beautiful babies and I wouldn't want her to be my contact person because she has kids that she needs to worry about. And also like, I don't want to tie up her funds. God forbid I end up in a dumbass adult emergency. Um, so I would probably call my aunt, who's her mom, who obviously has her grandbabies, but she isn't, you know, right at the beck and call of any kids or, you know, she doesn't have, as far as I know, honestly, I don't mean to, you know, just assume you don't got nothing going on, but she may be a better, you know, person to reach out to rather than my cousin who has to work and take care of her babies. Um, for if you're traveling you know, outside of the country or somewhere really far where you won't have someone that can get to you physically. The person just needs to be reliable um, and also, like I said, financially dependable. You want to be able to call someone, whether it be your best friend, your mom, your aunt, that can maybe send you $20 if you miss your flight and you have to buy a new flight. That happened to me. We'll get to it. Um, so yeah, you need an emergency contact person. You are a black girl traveling alone. You need an emergency contact person. Um, and like I said, that can look different, but you need someone that knows where you are. I forgot that part. Knows where you are. Like if you want to just do it up in, I'm 
peace, I'm out of here. At least one person needs to know where you are um, and not like you don't have to update them every five fucking seconds because you're an adult, but needs to know where you are, um, is reliable and could potentially help you out in a financial grip or an emergency because you're by yourself. So yeah. when you get there, I always say, try to learn the lay of the land as quickly as possible. So when I went to Atlanta by myself, I was trying to pay attention and all my Uber rides, trying to see what things were close to me, um, whether that be stores, whether that be the fucking police station, um, whatever, you need to be paying attention, paying attention, keeping your eyes peeled. Um, you know, I don't have to tell y'all because you're black girls that at home, we got to keep our eyes peeled, right? So doing the same thing when you are abroad, trying not to get so caught up and so in your tourist, tourist vibe that you are distracted or that you potentially make yourself vulnerable um, to crazy people. And that's not to put it on us, right? Crazy people are crazy people. If they're bothering us, they're fucking weird and they need to be arrested. However, we need to look out for us, right? So make other black girlfriends or just traveling friends in general making traveling friends as a solo traveler is one of the best things to do once you get there like i don't care if you're at the supermarket um be nice to the locals be nice to anyone that's helping you out like whether it be an uber um the person at your front desk if you're going to a hotel your airbnb person make friends while being safe make friends while being safe i think i said that in my um festival trip tips um watch that if you're a festival girly or if you're trying to become a festival girly it's a little bit different there's a little bit of extra tips and tricks in there for specifically traveling to festivals um and i did that by myself when i was in atlanta but yes make friends be safe keep your eyes peeled and along with that sorry school bus where are the children going it's well i guess they might have camp i shouldn't be like that a couple other things when you get there doing the reflection test on the mirror and checking for cameras. So people are really weird, like I said. And sometimes people have hidden cameras and apparently double-sided mirrors, which I didn't know was a thing until recently, but I'm going to drop the TikToks um, on both of them because I'm a cusp generation. And so even when I get into my auntie grandma moment, I can find that TikTok, period. So I'm gonna drop the TikToks for y'all. There's like a thing that you do with like your finger and a marker, like poking at the mirror to see if it's double-sided and people can look at you through it. And then just checking like, I guess common places for cameras, which sounds fucked up because no one should be putting cameras in their Airbnbs. Or even hotels because like, especially with hotels, it's like, you would assume that it's not the hotel that's being creepy. It's probably like some random weirdo putting up cameras. Anyway, check for those things. And I'm going to drop the links below so that you know how to check for them. Okay, so my last tip before I jump into places that have been deemed safe for Black girl solo travelers, um, I just want to say expect the unexpected. Expect the unexpected and be flexible because traveling with a group can be stressful. And a lot of that is just like difference in opinion, difference in travel style, difference in what activities you may deem fun or fascinating as opposed to the people you're traveling with, right? But when you're with, well, when you're alone and you're just by yourself, um, you have to extra budget. So I said budget earlier, but specifically, if you're going out of the country, you need to make sure that you know your conversions because they change constantly. So these are things that you need to be researching, making sure that you know whatever your budget is in U.S. American dollars is going to be either ex exponentially greater or still feasible for you when you go to wherever you may be going. Um, I also say budget for emergency like have some extra change that you know you will still have in your hand by the time you reach the airport those crazy things happen at the airport like i mentioned i missed a flight on my last solo trip um i was just really lit to be honest and i mixed up the times i mixed up the times um and i got there late and atlanta tsa is the actual devil um so yeah i missed my flight i wasn't mad i didn't blame anyone i was like i was lit and i fucked up um but 
I had to spend a night in an airport, which was very unfortunate. And I have a blog about that. I was delirious and it's not funny because it was very uncomfortable, but it is a learning experience. So if y'all want to check that out, um, yeah, budget, 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 budget. I can't, I can't express that enough. Um, but also within that, I want y'all to give yourself grace and take a deep breath. If anything isn't how it seems, if your hotel isn't up to par, if the food's bad, if there's weird, sketchy vibes. Like my friend recently went to NOLA and I want to go to NOLA so bad, probably for my birthday or for Mardi Gras. Um, but she just went with her partner and she was like, yeah, there's just like weird people. Like you got to like pay attention. And she happens to be with a very alert um, military man. So, you know, she felt safe and protected with him. But, you know, say you're going to NOLA by yourself. Apparently, they're sketchy freaking characters. <laughs> so, um, you know, just just give yourself grace and stay alert. But, you know, don't I don't want you to be anxious on your vacation. It's your vacation, girl. Vibe safely. I love you. Vibe safely. Um, so I've mainly solo traveled while black domestically. Um, there's kind of a gray area there, which we will get into. Um, but because of that, I wanted to share my list with y'all that I've been doing research on because I want to solo travel more. Um, there's a great piece that I personally feel solo traveling um, that I didn't have when I was trying to do group trips. I'm very much over group trips, like unless my family or my friends from high school want to do a group trip. I'm probably not going to be doing that within the next like four, five years. I just want to like solo travel um, for the most part. So I basically made a cohesive list after doing a little bit of research on places that ended up in everyone's list as solo black girl travelers. Um, so there's Ghana. Insert pictures here. Um, Tanzania. Tanzania, I saw a few times. I also saw Ghana a few times. Guatemala, I saw uh, many times. Like, almost on every list was Guatemala. Um, Costa Rica, Colombia. Singapore. Indonesia, which sounds fun. Cuba. That one I saw on almost every black girl list that I came across. Um, Thailand, which I am personally really excited about. That's probably really high up there on my list because this is in no particular order. This is just the ones that I saw populating often when I looked it up. Um, and Jamaica. So let me back up, honestly, because as someone that's mainly done domestic travel, I don't want to assume that all black girls know where it's safe to travel by ourselves in America. But basically, just don't go past the Mason to in line by yourself. Like, to me, I feel like that's... Like, when I go into the South, even with other people, just the amount of large American flags and Confederate flags makes me uncomfy. So, like, don't really go to the South by... <laughs> to the South by yourself, I would say, I feel like that's kind of a thing that we try not to do, um, or like very Republican or hick towns in the South. Um, yeah, oh, I think, oh, I should have said Canada. Canada is a good place for us to go, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure Canada likes black people. Um, but yeah, I've been good all up North. I mean, I'm a Northerner, an East Coast Northerner. So yeah, Cali, Cali, I don't feel like is unsafe for us, but I heard that they don't be fucking with black girls. Like, black girls that live out there say it's hard to date. So, yeah, I just wanted to say that for the domestic parts. Like, the South by yourself just always seems like kind of a bad idea. Not to say don't do not do it, but, like, be extra careful. Yeah. Then there were a couple that I saw that were just like, don't go here. Y'all can tell me if I'm wrong in the comments, but Italy and Morocco got bad, bad raps, okay? Like, they said that people were very condescending and rude. Um, I also want to say that there's most likely a difference between um, 
more chocolate black girls. I know some people don't like that. My best friend, my best friend hates that. But darker skinned black girls and lighter skinned black girls. And specifically, I believe um, Italy and Morocco, like for darker skinned black girls. The wind is battling me right now. Um, but yeah, I feel like that was a thing. They were like, mm, bad vibes. But to be honest, I've never really wanted to do Europe. Like I took Italian in college. My teacher was really creepy, so I dropped out. But yeah, I always heard that Italian men like black girls. But like, does that mean that it's safe for us in Italy? No, I don't think so, because I've heard otherwise. Also Morocco. So yeah, that. Okay, last but not least, I have places that kind of gave me mixed reviews when it came to my research because y'all know like even if I don't know I'm gonna research it for y'all so that y'all know so that we can know together so mixed reviews were Brazil France and India so Brazil and France it just gave like it was fun and cute but there might have been some side eyes or like weird vibes for some people and then some people just had a great time India specifically, I said that we would get to the kind of gray area of my domestic versus international solo travel as a black girl. So I studied abroad in India and I was the only black girl that went. So a lot of times it felt like I was solo traveling as a black girl, but I was with my school and like they protected us a lot because we were Penn Staters and for the most part, it was a large group of white women. Um, if y'all want a video just on that, I could talk for a long time about that experience. I love India, it's gorgeous, it's beautiful. I had such a fun time. And being the only black girl was a lot. Um, I was also natural and I had pink hair. Ooh, speaking of that, if you are international traveling, make sure that you have all the many versions of the things that you need to maintain your hair. Thank you, love you. Okay, it's getting hot and my phone's starting to tweak, so. I went with a pink afro. I came back looking like a fucking peach. It was like this weird fuzzy blonde moment. I hated it. Anyway, India has mixed reviews for me because they don't usually see Americans over there, let alone black people. Like they told us this in my class that led up to this experience. Um, and it was very much true. Like they were handing people their babies like to take pictures with them and a lot of people wanted to take pictures with me and it didn't bother me as much as it bothered everyone around me which was very interesting but I feel like I'm a black girl so I get treated weird in America so I don't know but that's why it's a mixed review for me personally um because you're you kind of get treated like in this weird celebrity way but it's like the thought process behind that and like why could probably throw people off um at some point a security guard tapped on my head and thought that it was a part of my visor. Um, so yeah, like it can be weird. I don't know, whatever, I'm high. Anyway, that is everything that I have for y'all. I hope that this was helpful and I'm obviously going to do more vlogs as I solo trip by myself to various lands on our list. And I hope that y'all are safe and happy and thriving, living your best black girl lives. Um, all of my links will be down below by my book and I hope you're having a marvelous, lovely, and spectacular day because the only things that matter here are you, me, the arts, and the fact that none of the other shit matters anyway. <sighs> There's a convict running for president. None of the other shit matters anyway. So you might as well have fun. Love you guys. <laughs>